Alright guys, it's time for a closing moment on this deck. Uh, it says Resanctuary because I wanted to make sure I could find this. Anyways, so before we start, there was a duel before this and let me explain that, what that was. I used the rebuilt version against someone in uh, multiplayer or something, whatever it's called, so that I could uh, test it out and show you guys how it kind of works. Uh, in the video, you do see different cards than you see in this, but guaranteed, I did test this out after, and this is what I finally came up with. I mean, I was just showing off like a near completed thing. I didn't change too much from the original thing that I was testing out, so. But before we go into that, uh, I would like to show the message that you had. Laugh aloud, I was psyched when Hyperion was milled. And then I put Hyperion, the last tote, sad face. I, it was actually pretty funny, in my opinion. But he never messaged back, so. Oh well. Anyways. Without further ado, let's actually get into uh, Sanctuary or Resanctuary. Now with this, I took out a lot of the traps that say like, oh, if you have Sanctuary of the Sky, you can negate and stuff. I get that it's supposed to be a Sanctuary in the Sky deck, which it still is in my opinion, but the thing is, trying to rely on those traps and I don't end up with Sanctuary in the Sky just makes me go minus and I don't have anything to protect myself. So, you know, I mean Mirror Force and Negate Attack, eh, whatever. But I needed something else and I needed some more stuff. I also took out an Earth Tuner and I took out uh, Medora I think his name was because it just didn't flow. As you'll see every monster in this deck is light or should be light I hope <laughs> because I should have done my job right if I didn't uh, anyways so without further ado let's go into this deck uh, two shine balls I personally like two they're able to draw out by Venus here uh, most people run three and that's reasonable and whatever so yeah but Pretty much, yeah. Basically, what you do is you bring out two of them, and then you X Y Z into like a Gachi Gachi. Uh, I'm only running two, so I'm not doing Dark Mist in this extra deck or something else. I kind of didn't like the fact that I couldn't like detach one to get into stuff. That's why I tributed for a Air Knight Parsha because I needed some ammo in the grave. So I decided to tribute for Air Knight Parshaft, but these two cards, when I explain about them, they'll take care of that problem. Uh, let me make sure that's on number one here. Okay. Anyways, uh, so yeah. Basically for XYZs, or you can synchro up. It, it's up to you. Two Air Knight Parshafts. Three's a little... If I can stop hitting the left trigger. Three is a little too much, but two I think is fine because two level fives and whatever. Uh, basically, what he does. Actually, I showed off what I told you what he does before. Or so. Anything I went over really in the other deck recipe, I'm not gonna go over too much in this. So yeah, I've gone over Christia too, but I decided to run one of them. I'll, I'll have it on the effect. One of them because really. I kind of wanted to draw into other monsters, and I can't always be assured to draw, be able to summon Chrissia. I mean, you know, you run to, but really I wanted to focus more around Hyperion and his ability. Uh, one Hectatrice, you discard him for Valhalla. I did bump up Valhalla to two, so I can do some more shenanigans. Uh, one honest. This definitely needs to be in a fairy deck that's light based. Especially agents or even sanctuary or whatever you want to call it. 
Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, if I, you haven't watched my videos before, basically you discard this card during the damage step, either players, and your monster gains attack equal to your opponent's monster. In short, your opponent's monster gets destroyed and you deal damage equal to your monster's attack after you drop this card, of course. If you're trying to understand what this means, I just simplified it. You deal the amount of damage you have not, or deal the amount of damage that your monster's attack is not, you know, an extra whatever. Three Hyperions, I went over it. But the reason it's at 3 instead of at 2 is because I have enough agents. I have like 5 of them here, which is kind of less than the other one. The other deck had um, a total of... I think it was a total of four, seven of them. But 5 of them is fine. I don't really think of it anything unnecessary. Uh, after Agent of Mystery gets in the grave, it's good enough to get banished. Agent of Creation, you don't really need her too much after she goes and does the life point thing, so, yeah. And three of them isn't too bad of a dead draw, because, I mean, for some reason in this game, you never seem to draw, like, three of the one certain card, so. And even if you can't bring it out by its effect, you do have two Valhalla's which bring it out anyways, so either way you're pretty much going pretty plus on it. One Neo Knight, or one Neo Parshaft, the Sky Paladin. Really my thoughts on him, I really didn't care to add him, but you know I wanted to keep it more Sanctuary like because that's what you wanted. So uh, yeah, there's one of him because there's two Air Knights. I didn't want to run three Air Knights because, in theory, I have three Nova Summoners, which brings out a Air Knight or whatever other card. So having three and three kind of messes up the deck, because yeah, it's a little more deck thinning if I go, let's say Nova Summoner for Nova Summoner, Nova Summoner again for Nova. Uh, even going for creation so is good, but yeah, and then going into Air Knight Parshaf. So it's like Nova, 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 then Air Knight Parshaf. And it goes easy enough. And yeah. So I have this. I wouldn't include this except for the fact that you can special summon it. That is probably the only reason I have one. Uh, other than that, I don't play more than one. It's not really my favorite thing to put out on the field, but it does do piercing damage. I do draw a card, and it does get a whopping big attack point, so fair enough on that. Uh, three Nova Summoner, we talked about it. It brings out pretty much every fairy in whatever position, other than Serodiades, Serodiades, Christia, and Hyperion and Neo Parashaf, of course. So another th good thing to note is you can bring out this and go into Shining Balls make XYZs. You can go into this. If you special, if you, if this card gets destroyed by battle and you bring out this card, Agent of Mystery Earth does not get its effect. It just counts as a special summon. This card only gets an effect when it's normal, so. That's why it's kind of at two be a dead draw if you have all it the creations but we have a card that fixes that um you can go in the shine balls but there's no reason to do that um you could go in the air knight par shafts which is pretty good um never go in the hecatrice and honest is pretty good to go into because if you summon use nova summoner Go through all three of these, then you bring out Honest. Honest can bounce back to the hand, and then you just like drop an Honest or whatever. You can either have Honest in your hand, or wait, no. You do three Nova Summoners, and then you get Honest. Then you can summon out, like, if you have Valhalla, you can bring 
You would special summon out creation, normal summon mystery, get another v creation, and then get out uh, two shine balls. Uh, I guess you would attack and drop honest. Then, uh, well, it's kind of actually I get really confused, and it just made this more complicated than it needed to be. But basically, you can get four fairies in the grave really quickly if you go like three Nova Summoners and then an Honest. Because you just go three Nova Summoners, which puts it in the grave. And then you bring out like Hyperion, someone brings out Blue Ice Attack, drop Honest. Then you have four fairies, then you go Christia, which is another thing to note about Christia. Which, which card am I on? Nova Summoner? Yeah, Nova Summoner. Okay. So when you bring out Christia, I would recommend bringing back Honest so people have a hard time getting over Christia. And even if they do get over Christia, it goes top of the deck. There'll be four fairies in the graveyard again. Because if you're adding Honest, you also have three fairies in the grave before. Yeah. You have four fairies, which let's just say is all Nova Summoners and Honest. Then you summon crit, special summon Chris yeah, because you have four fairies in the grave. You can bring back Honest. You drop Honest to protect Chrissia from an attack, and your opponent gets rid of it next turn. Chrissia goes to the top of the deck. You special summon Chrissia next turn, and you bring back Honest so you can do that all over again as many times as you want. And just before you ask, the most likely thing to happen is you would do Ancient and Mystery for Earth. Then you get Venus, Venus is summoned, then you'd go two shine balls, and then those all would go to the grave and you'd have four fairies and all. So yeah, that pretty much explains a lot. Uh, three Venus, you pay 500, and you special summon one shine ball. You basically do a thousand and bring them out. Uh, if you want to play it smart, like if you know your opponent has a Vex Failure, you guys are like sitting there waiting for you to finish or something. What you want to do is you want to do Venus and then go into a Shine Ball. But make sure the Shine Ball is from the deck because sometimes you draw into it, which is another reason why I don't play Shine Ball at 3. Because I don't like to draw into Shine Balls, but I tend to do that sometimes. So anyways, you pay 500, you bring one from the deck. Now, usually at this point, they're going to stop. They're going to make you. They're going to let you pay 500 again, because 500 is a cost. Effect is the special summon, so they're probably going to affect Baylor you again for you bring out another Shine Ball to get like Gachi, as like every other player that plays agents do. So, yeah, just make sure you get the Shine Balls from the deck first, so that even if you get Effect Baylor, that it doesn't matter that much because if you only have one and then they get rid of Venus you can tribute one of the shine balls for Parshap and do some shenanigans anyway so not to mention you bring out her carry on right after too so you don't really go minus you can bring out Parshaps and on top of mystical shine balls as well uh, so that was another plus of it you can use shine balls as tributes to get this out which even adds more to the Valhalla than spe which you probably special summon this first anyways but Valhalla bring this out for some reason uh, Valhalla bring this out then you do your special summoning of these two and then uh, bring out Parshef on top of one of the shine balls one of the shine balls would be a dead shine ball by then but you still have two but usually you just tribute the like, Venus for whatever so you know it's, it's really up to you guys for what you want to do on that part uh, to earth not really great to summoning because there's a thousand and if it gets uh, effect failure it's not really something that you want to keep around so two of them is fine unless you search out the deck a little more uh, while well, you have Sanctuary in the Sky, well, you know what it does. You add Venus, and 
you can add Hyperion, which are three of them. If you have Sanctuary and a Sky, of course. Uh, two Zeradias, Zeradias, whatever. Uh, you discard it, and well, you know what it does. So what I did for this, instead of two Sanctuary, I boosted up to three. So I have more of a chance to draw into Sanctuary than, you know, having to get rid of fairies and whatever. And even though... Oh, actually, it doesn't matter either way. So three of them. There's two Zeradites because I like to play one less. If you ever see my decks, if I play three field spells, I play two terraformings. If I play two field spells, I play one terraforming. So in this case, I run two of these, and if I actually draw in a Sanctuary, I have a 2,100 feeder. So, one Dark Hole, I don't need to explain that. Two Forbidden Lance, it protects your monster from a spell or a trap. Really good. Uh, also decreases something by 800 attack. So, two Mystical Space, get back row, pod duality, you reveal top cards, and then you basically add one to your hand. Something that is a little better, even though you do have search power with this for two cards and this for, well, however you play it. And then you have draw power for par shaft and these par shafts and whatever. It's still a good idea to have like pod dualities, one day apiece, trade in, whatever, to go on through your deck so you can actually get through your deck a little quicker. Even hand destructions are not too bad, because hand destruction puts uh, fairies in the grave, allowing you just to get them back with Christian. So yeah, but yeah, you basically reveal three, and you add one to your hand, one card to your hand, whatever you feel like at the time. Three sanctuary in the sky, as I said before. I feel like this deck needs it a little more, so three sanctuary is really good. Two Valhalla. It Let's see special summon a fairy if you have no monsters. Two of them are fine. Three of them is too much. One of them I feel like is too little, so. Yeah, pretty much what I like to do is special summon Venus. Activate its effect. Summon Mystery. Make a Gachi and a Catastor. And sit there for however long. Even just like special summoning one of the big beasties like Christia, if like you have nothing better to play, you can just special summon Christia, attack your opponent mirror forces, then this goes back to top deck and you just bring it out again, stopping your opponent each time from special summoning. So, pretty, pretty good. Letting you stall out and draw more cards, even if they were to get rid of something, then you'd be like, oh I have an agent so I bring out Hyperion. Or something random like that, you know. Uh, two mirror forces, I pretty much have the same as the other one. One for pulse, I needed more summon, anti summon support. Uh, it bounces a monster back, of course. Bottomless, you can trade out for solemn, you can trade any of these out. Basically, banishes a monster, whatever. Be careful, you can't do this to Stardust because Stardust can negate this. Uh, two rays of hope. Uh, there is beckoning of light, but I kind of like this. At first, I thought I said you can add two lights to your hand. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. And I realized it said two to the deck and shuffle it. I'm like, oh, that kind of sucks. But then I realized that even if your Hyperions get sent to the grave, or yeah, sent to the grave, you can do ray of hope and return back to the deck, and then like summon out. H in a mystery, wow, Sanctuary in the Sky is out on the field, and then add them to your hand anyways. So this deck has a lot of searching power too, and whatever, so you don't really go minus from adding lights back to your deck. And also this helps you control the amount of lights if you're trying to bring out Christia in the first place. Um, also helps you get Air Knight, Parshaf, and Neo Parshaf back in the deck. If they're in the grave, pretty much is like Call of the Haunted, but no, it's not like Call of the Haunted. It's basically like Pot of Avarice, but you don't get a draw. One return from a different dimension. With all the light monsters you're banishing of Hyperion, 
it's really good to know that you can pay half your life points and bring out every one of your banished monsters that you can at that moment. So, you can bring out Hyperions and make like a rank 8, which I think that's what I forgot to put in the extra deck. Uh, you can bring out Part Neo Parshaf, you can bring out Air Knight Parshafs, Chrysia, and whatever. Which is kind of good because if you attack with a monster, Christia prevents like gores too. So they can't gores, battle fader you, or Trigodia you. Another thing to note. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the deck. Next up is the extra deck. Not really anything too impressive. I did add some level 5s because I feel I felt like they were needed. Catastrophe, because Catastrophe, Amardi, Amar, eh, Armad, Armadies, whatever. Because it's kind of like um, Gear Town or Ancient Gears. One Black Rose. I personally like this because it blows up monsters. Uh, hold on. Where was Sanct there's Sanctuary? I mean, you had. Uh, you actually didn't have a level 7, surprisingly. But uh, it's easy to bring out if you were curious. You do. Um, Summon, special summon this, activates effect, get shine ball, get earth, and just bring out another shine ball for whatever apparent reason. That's four cards, black rose, bring out Christia, you know, simple stuff. Uh, I actually kind of like these cards now, but you can switch them out for any level sixes pretty much. Mistworm, because it's Mistworm. Scrap Dragon, because I wanted level 8. You can switch one out for Crimson. I just like Stardust a little bit, because I get more protection. One Castellar Omega, because I actually can make this. And like other Ancient Gear monsters, he can make himself immune to traps and spells for the rest of that turn. Uh, Gachi Gachi to a rank 2 that needs 2 level 2s. Simple enough. Get each of your monsters get 200 boosts of attack and defense for each material attached to them. So two of them, and it is a total of 400 material or 400 more attack and defense, giving your guys a grand total of like 3,000 or more than 2,000 attack. Cowboy, because he's cowboy. Corn, because he's corn, and I still think he should be at one in any deck. Uh, Herald of Pure Light, I actually kind of like reading the effect. I don't think, I don't know if I really care for it though. So basically, you can target one monster and add it to your hand. Kind of like adding a Hyperion to your hand. And shuffle one card from your deck to your, from your hand to the deck. And you can only use this once per turn. Which is really good. And then, you can once per turn detach one XYZ from this card. He gains a thousand attack and defense during either part of battle step while an attack involving this monster is occurring. Which that doesn't matter. The part part that matters is you can discard one card from your hand. Because discarding is from the hand, of course. And for the rest of the turn, monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle and take no battle damage. So technically, this card Yeah, you can only use this one for duel apparently. But uh, anyways, so that protects like all your monsters, really good, in my opinion, if you don't want to go for Gachi. Uh, but basically this lets you recycle your graveyard too. And for the side deck, one Jupiter, if you like it, basically what she does is you banish the agent and you gain five, one of your light monsters gain 800. I didn't feel like it was doing too much in the deck, that's why I took it out, as you can see in the video. But, you know, it's there if you need it. And if you have Sanctuary in the Sky, you can select one of your removed from play fairy, or you discard a fairy type, and select one of your removed from play light fairy types and special summon it. Basically, I parry on, I guess. Royal Decree, if you need it. Um, I took it out because. It just didn't feel like it helped. Uh, La Vauble Chain, I pretty much had that if you put in 
Jupiter, then more rank fours to you. Also, rank eights are pretty good, and rank threes, but I worked with what I could. Uh, as for rank threes, if you like Mars, then go right ahead and put Mars in there. But personally, I don't care for Mars so much. Only because, true, it gets a good attack boost, and if you use it with the right cards, it's, um, but the thing is, it does become unaffected by spells, so it's that's like probably the only thing I care for about it. And if you have Sanctuary, it gains attack and defense equal to the difference between life points. Which, for finishing blow, really good. For early game, not really great, and I don't care to draw into it, which just makes me a little bit... Of course, I could banish it Hyperion and yada yada point is I don't want to have like too many dead draws and stuff. I want to make sure I can draw into whatever I need. Uh, one judgment, not really anything impressive since it is level 6 but you contribute it to deal damage equal to the difference of your get you and your opponent's life points and you have to have sanctuary in the sky of course. Uh, one March one, I actually really like it. If you want, you can take out one Venus and put it in and it'll protect you and does a thousand damage once flipped over by an attack. Uh, one Cestus of Dalaga, Dalagala, whatever. It's pretty good. I like to equip it to Air Knight Parsha, but really if I'm not equipping it to something that does piercing damage, I don't really care to have it in there. So yeah. So Maybe some other time, but you can put it back in there if you like it that way. Tephys really, I guess, it doesn't really need be needed. I mean, if you really need more draw power, I guess you could take out like Neo and maybe an Air Knight or two. I would definitely say Tephys at two though, or even if you want, you just take out Neo and put one in and be fine. Uh, one day of peace because it's one day of peace and it's more draw power. Other cards that work with this are trade in as well, due to the fact that you have a total of like four, yeah, four level eights. And except for Christia, you can get them all back. Actually, no, all of them you can get back when my time out. An extra shine ball, as I said, if you like those. If you don't care for Honest for some apparent reason, there is Luminize, you can switch it out for Mirror Forest and your monsters get a boost until the next end phase. So I kind of like that, I use in Photons, it worked really well, but it's all up to you guys. Uh, one back getting a Light, you discard your entire hand and add back any lights from your graveyard, which your whole deck is light. Uh, one Transmigration Prophecy. Really didn't get to see any play in that duel that I had before this, but you know, it's mostly for getting back to spells and traps. If I felt like traps, of course, basically like Ball Hall and Sanctuary, or maybe even Dark Hole, just so I can get those back. It helps out the deck and makes it so that I don't run out of Sanctuary in the sky. Uh, Call of the Haunted brings something back from the grave, of course, and. This one is just in general. Effect Failure, Phoenix Chain, uh, Herald of Orange Light, which Herald of Orange Light is more recommended than Effect Failure for this. But anyways, something that just negates monsters effects works well against your opponent. And I'm talking about like only your opponent's monsters, not yours. Don't negate your own monsters effects because you probably will go really minus. Uh, and other stuff you can play is Shadowing Prisoning Mirror, so that Catastor doesn't stop you from making a play like it did to me. Like, I think it stopped me one time. So anyways, that's pretty much it for the deck. Uh, sorry if it doesn't meet up to someone's expectations. And I'm not talking about JJ, of course. But anyways, if it doesn't meet up to your expectations and don't care for it, Sorry, but, you know, I did try my best of this, so I think it works pretty well. I give it an 8 out of 10. 
Um, if you want, you could. If you want me to, let me know, and I can make like a chaos version. Because the chaos version is more consistent. It doesn't really use sanctuary, but it does benefit a lot of things that just this deck can't benefit itself. But other than that, this deck is definitely 8 out of 10. Like, you know. I mean, there was a terraforming, didn't really need that. As their deities basically can search out Sanctuary and Sky a thousand times better than terraformings. And even if terraforming, even if I ran out of sanctuaries in the sky, I could still set their deities if I need defense. Unlike terraforming, where I can't use it if it. If I can't search field spell, so yeah, and I could attack with Zeradites as well. So that's two plus two compared to terraforming. Not saying terraforming is bad, but in a situation of this, Zeradites is all you need. I hope that's pronounced right. Zeradites, Dias, whatever. So yeah, eight out of ten. So. Let me finish this off guys, uh, so if you guys enjoyed this video, leave your comments in the section down below, tell me your thoughts, did you enjoy the deck, did you not, would you keep the same, would you take out the deck, uh, do you think I did a good job, do you think I should take out the agent engine, which I didn't talk about much, but you can add there Chrissy as well, I forgot to mention that, but, I mean, if you want me to take out the ancient engine, then this would be a totally different deck too. Enough rambling. I, I'm just rambling on now. I hope you guys enjoyed the deck, and there you go, Mr. JJ. I hope this deck meets your criteria. It's not the pros deck in the world, like, it's not the best deck in history. As I said, I'm not a professional MLG player, but I do try my best, so yeah, catch you later.